Over the last five days, I made 11 of the 100 recipes out of Mescla by East of Belfridge. Five mains, six sides, and zero dependencies. Meaning I wasn't asked to make a sauce, a stock, or a spice blend in order to accomplish a recipe. Average cost per serving was around $8.24, and average time to get a recipe from start to finish was about an hour and a half. All right, let's talk accessibility. The most uncommon tools that I was asked to use were my blender, my mandolin, and a blowtorch, but the blowtorch was completely optional. The most difficult skills I was asked to perform were julienning green onions and butterflying some shrimp, but after a quick Google, I was back in action. Teach me, Emerald. Uh, some of the ingredients were pretty tricky for me to find in LA. Those included things like scotch bonnet, induya sausage, piri piri seasoning. First, we have to figure out how to make piri piri seasoning. But I expect most of these things are much easier to find in London than they are in LA. And Ista and her team do a great job of providing alternatives so that a lot of those can be replaced with the exception of Induya because I don't really think there's much of a replacement for that. So for accessibility, I gave this book an eight. On the design side, we have two main gripes. First, the text is very small and sometimes hard to read. It's so hard to see. Am I just going blind? That says a half teaspoon of fine salt. Two, the recipe layout itself deprioritizes helpful side note information, oftentimes putting them to the bottom of the page or sometimes even on the second page of a recipe. Those are especially disappointing because she hides some really helpful details in those notes. And the photos, as expected, if you're familiar with Ista's Instagram, are very vibrant and punchy and aesthetic. And due to some of those layout issues, we ended up putting this book's design at a four. Let's talk about flavor real quick. The book is divided into two main sections, everyday and entertaining. At the end of my week, I ended up making six everyday dishes and five entertaining dishes. The everyday dishes were pretty quick to get on the table, around 45 to 60 minutes each, but the flavors were underwhelming and the cleanup was... As the person who cleaned them, definitely more of a pain in the ass than any other like multi-pan meal I've ever made. I don't think I've baked things on that hard in years. While the entertaining dishes took around two, three hours each, they were really hands-off and the flavors were phenomenal. Hard smash, hard smash, hard smash. Pretty much every recipe that I'd recommend making out of this book comes in that section. Regardless of the section of the book, we found that the uglier the dish looked, the better it tasted. And that landed flavor at a solid seven. I'm not like mad at any of these meals or like any of these dishes. I just like, I feel like some of them were prettier than they were effective. As far as writing in this book, the recipes are giving very much Allison Roman meets Yodam Otolenghi vibes. They're built around trendy ingredients with a few curveballs here and there. The prose is kept short and sweet, mostly focusing on attributing a recipe with a personal experience that Easta had. There are some really great tips and subs slipped into this book, but honestly, the typeface makes them really hard to notice. If you're not reading that like preface, mm -hmm. then, Read you're, the cookbooks. then you're gonna miss that tidbit. You're also probably gonna miss the tidbit about the poblanos being like the first choice. She does give a lot of guidance in that section, yeah. Mm -hmm. In the intro, Easter explains that she measures anything over three tablespoons and grams. And that's so frustrating to me because it would be so much easier to work out of this book if everything was just in grams. I understand why she did it, I just don't like it. Because you end up getting things like... Third teaspoon. That's annoying. While the design of the book diminished the writing, we still gave it a seven. And last but certainly not least, we have value. We consider a typical cookbook to be worth the cover price if you can get at least two to three smashes out of your week. And we got six smashes out of our 11 recipes that we made out of this book. So for value, we gave it a nine. That brings us to a final cult score of seven. The beautiful presentation of some of the dishes in this book write checks that their flavors can't cash. But if you're interested in fusion cuisine, especially Brazilian, Italian, and Mexican flavors, then I think that mezcla is worth the price of admission which is $35.